Welcome, friends and fellow adventurers. I'm Alex Reed, your guide to the lands of Manassas and DM for Cocked, a real play DD podcast. Last week, the party got to meet Baraka's unnamed purple glowing raptor, and Agard shrunk half the party while enlarging the others. But before we get into that, let's meet the cast and have them answer the following question as the character they play. And today, the question that we are going to answer as we introduce our characters will be, who in the party does your character trust the least? (laughs) Yeah, let me repeat that. I'll go first. Who in the party, (laughs) just to make sure you guys heard it clearly, who in the party does your character trust the least? The DM. (laughs) Yes, 100%. That should be true, but I'm not in the party. There are four oh, people well, in the okay, party. Specified. Uh, hi, I'm Jessica. Mm. Hi, I'm Jessica Reed. <laughs> hi, I'm, play, mm, I know, I'm not I like, sure no. who I am. <laughs> uh, I play Katie, a dragonborn fighter. Um, who she distrusts the least would be uh, Mr. Ibrone. He knew it was coming. I don't feel bad. And if you want to know, subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> 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 prelude so no um yeah she's just she's seen some things she's seen some things that she is not sure what she's seen why she's seen it i'm not talking about private parts guys it's just (laughs) some actions that have happened in battle so you can edit it out it's fine (laughs) all of it Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I'm Reggie Morris. I'll be playing Baraka Ulting, the Cobalt Artificer. The people or persons or whatever that Baraka trusts the least out of the party is just not Katie. He, he, <laughs> he, di- he distrusts Ebron and Agard kind of equally because he doesn't have a reason to trust them so as of yet. So it's not really mm. that... He just doesn't trust, like we like we talked yeah, about last episode. Yeah. He just doesn't trust anybody. Period. Like you have to prove yeah. yourself to him before he even yeah. gives you any trust. Agard's so helped he, him out a couple times. I was just saying he's he's the opposite of Agard. Agard trusts everybody. That's his yeah. biggest flaw. But here, when we talk about who do you it's, trust the least, uh, it's a very uh, it's a very slow burn when it comes to Bracca. Sure. Actually, even considering someone an acquaintance like. Katie, he considers Brock, or he considers Katie to be, like, an acquaintance so far, um, just because they've traveled for a longer period of time, and... And she's just forced him on her shoulders. I just, I just want to point out, you were downgraded from best friend to acquaintance. Well, yeah. Ooh. I... How oh. does Katie feel about that? Oh, you know what? Katie mama. doesn't know. Katie doesn't know. She's not gonna know. <laughs> she doesn't know. I'm telling Katie. How's she gonna know? <laughs> um, but... That's pretty much how I think would be the best way for me to say it. Brocka just kind of, he doesn't have a reason to trust Ebron and Agard yet. Well, Agard more so, because like you said, Agard's done stuff for Brocka, but Ebron, a- Brocka just doesn't yeah, really whatever. know Ebron, like, yet. So, Agard doesn't trust uh, uh, Brocka because he's a piece of shit. <laughs> Understandable. And you know what? I'm okay if... <laughs> So let me get this straight. The hierarchy <laughs> and the party for Braca is going to be Katie, Agard, and Abrone. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so my understanding saying? is Abrone is trusted the least. So far. Continue. Well, good. Okay. Hi, this is Alex Groves. I play Agard the Furball Druid. That's so high energy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would say, and this is the honest answer. There's no one that Agard trusts more or less right now. Yeah. You guys are his friends. We've done things together. We've looked out for one another a short period of time. But again, as trusting, going back to Agard's flaw, as trusting as he is, he he doesn't distrust any way anyone in, in in the group. You know, now Will he pick up flaws later on and maybe that'll change? He very well could. I, I would have met Agard is very young for a Furbolg. Furbolg can live hundreds of years, you know, and he is, you know, very, very young, you know, for, for a, a Furbolg. So there's going to be, yeah, <laughs> there's going to be, mama, um, <laughs> you know, there's going to be some maturing. So obviously that'll, that'll change things here and there. But for right now, he, everyone's, he's, everyone's kind of on the level. 
I just realized, I think a lot of us are still really young and, like, growing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. This whole party is, like, young players compared to mm-hmm. their yeah. races. Yeah. So. Like, I, I say young. I think, I can't remember what I put Agard. Is Agard in his 40s? Yeah. But, he, I mean, he grew We're up. considered adults, I think, but we're just Yeah, still like, young. he is yeah. a... Yeah. In, yeah, very young much. Young adults. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. We're in our 20s. <laughs> Hi, it's Connor Joyner. I play Ebron Iron Man, the Leon and Ranger. And as far as who he trusts the least, it's going to be Katie because... Just out of spite. <laughs> no, it's not out of spite. It's the fact that he's in a... When it comes right down to it, in a fight, she's a danger to the group because she tends to lead with her emotions instead of just reacting. For sure. And he wants to trust everyone, but as you've seen all, all already, he keeps his his emotions either locked up <laughs> or well in check, and that's why he's so hard to read. And really, the only person that he can kind of be himself around is Agar, because he understand because Agar kind of understands him in a way that the other two don't. Okay. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> now, let's pick up where we last left off. The party was in a clearing in the woods. Agard attempted to cast Goodberry, and half the party was enlarged while the other half was shrunk. So let's get right into it. If you guys want to make perception checks as you stick your head down, you can see what you see. Uh, 20, 26. <laughs> speaking true to katie three no three so <laughs> you you clock both a brone and i still have the spear which in is bracket which is which is, which is now like a, yeah oh, no it's it's my size because i was holding it so. oh, oh yeah that's true it yeah. exploded with you. everything right. on you that you're carrying gets to that oh size oh my gosh size. what does so, that do with so the light I, I would say yeah i would say the light now has extended to about 30 feet Ooh, because it I got much larger tea leaves now um, <laughs> so you, I'm just looking you up kind it. of explode and you use your your staff and you kind of hold it out and you clock both of them mm-hmm. before we get to a brown hang on keep that thought at this point with your three you look down and you don't see anything for a moment because as you look down the spear comes out and it's like the light is like right in your eyes so uh, you kind of get flash banged for a second you're like wait what <laughs> And you kind of blink a couple times, and then you start looking around. <laughs> Agar, Agar, okay, you gotta point the spear somewhere else. Do you see Katie, the drone? Yes. And Braca? Yes, I see them. Katie, do not move. Okay. They are very near us. I don't. I don't want to move my feet. And then I then I point them out to to her. Okay. Yep. And at that point, oh Abrone, you're looking up. So Abrone's surprised because he suddenly goes from normal height to. Small and he's looking at Agard like, and, and oh, Agard is. Oh my god! What just happened? And he's looking around and like, what did you just do? I attempted to cast a spell. This is not the spell, obviously, but I, I knew there was something going on. Um, are you okay? Do you feel okay? I'm fine, but. Return me back to normal! I will. Please. Brock, are you okay? I mean, I'm just smaller. If I was already small, it doesn't really change a whole lot. Okay. All right. Katie's just, like, holding out her hand a little bit towards Brock, gently, like... Can you come here so that way I don't accidentally squish you? I guess, I guess I'll walk onto her hand. I'm still, well, ri- I'm, I'm still okay. writing stuff down. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> Agar was just going to drop it after I made sure they were all so, right, so. so as Braca walks onto Katie's hand. Yeah. Can you willingly drop it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh. It, I, I gave, it, what it did is it gave me the ability to mm. cast this, and not knowing what I was doing, I cast it. Yeah. So, And then he kind of, basically, the way I see it is, you inadvertently cast it, you realized what has happened, mm-hmm. And that it was a probably an effect for what you tried, and then you kind of thought about dropping it, and it's at that point that everybody starts to readjust to the sizes that they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make a um, Arcana check real quick. Could I do that as well? Yep. Okay. One second. Back to my 
That was enlightening. Uh, like 15? Uh, Arcana. Uh, 16. So um, you, you both are very sure that when you thought about dropping it is when it ended. So you're pretty sure that you controlled it, that you were the one that accidentally cast it. And then when you thought about dropping it, it kind of went away. Mm-hmm. So you're pretty sure. Braca is not sure if it is the individual that did it or Braca is actually pretty sure that it is the Violet Woods that create that maybe creates this effect of wild magic. Okay. That's not where we are, right? You are right on the edge of the Violet oh, Woods. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that just what he thinks it is? That's what he thinks at this point, because okay. he, he hasn't seen anybody else try to cast magic. Mm-hmm. So he has heard of these magic areas. So he mm-hmm. believes that it could be a magic area based okay. on what you've learned with RPIP and things like that throughout your life. Gotcha. Braca, I guess, still writing stuff down and who will look up and realize everybody's normal height. He'll just say to you, um, I think it's... Because of the area, maybe. There's other areas in the country that are wild magic-y in this part. These woods specifically may be like that. Has anything else in the past like this happened to you? No, it, it, the first time was the morning we left. Uh, just outside of uh, Port Savorso. I woke up and tried to cast... Goodberry, as I do in the mornings, and it didn't feel right. Didn't feel right this morning either. Mm. So um, I'm, I'm not sure. This is I, I there. There is something with my people that this wild magic, you know, has afflicted others. There's a powerful archdruid that led our people a long time ago. I'm not sure if that is it or your explanation of the woods. That may be it as well. I'm I'm not sure. I I'm concerned. Is the um the area near Port Savorsa, those woods, is that a part of the Violet Woods? No, the Healing Wilds are uh, separated hmm. from the Violet Woods. Okay, um, but neither of those are near Port Savorsa. So the Healing Wilds are just north of Port Savorsa, about a day's travel, <clears throat> day and a half's travel. You guys took about two days yeah two days since leaving ports of orsa and you've just got to the beginning of the um violet woods okay um what a nature ch- what a nature check tell me anything else like specifically i wouldn't think so I, w- I would think you would need to see um more what has been recorded historically so like if you were ever in tanea you could look specifically for Spots that have been documented as wild magic. Okay. But uh, as of right now, you don't necessarily see or feel like there's anything special. But based on what you've read and what you know, Braca is saying, you know, I, I, it could be this area. Okay. Braca is going to turn to Ebron. Was it strange being that close to the ground? It was very enlightening to see the world how you see it. Brocko's going to think in his head how if he should be offended or not by a bro and say that. So I just I just rolled an insight for Agar mm-hmm. to see if he would wonder if this yep. is also affecting his other uh, ability. Okay. His wall shape. So he's curious if it is. I just don't want to bog things down by doing something no, else. No, if... If he would want to wild shape to check it, I, that's not bogging anything down. That's okay. checking it. Okay. So. Uh, I don't know if everyone wants to keep their distance. Uh, Braca, if you wouldn't mind. I want to I want to see if this has any effect on um, my ability to, to change. I'll just be shape. 10 feet again. Okay. I don't know. What, what... I'm going to back <clears throat> off to about 15 feet just to give you plenty of room. I would be near Braca. Braca still just waiting with his eyes peeled, ready to jot stuff down in his notebook. Okay. Okay. So that's just uh, off the our table. It's a d6. Um, I would say roll, because it is the first time we're doing this, roll another d20. Okay. Um, I wouldn't add a spellcasting modifier since it's wild sheep. Is it low again? That's a shit. Oh, oh! <laughs> I, have, I have a shit and a crit on my D twenty. 
crit is a 20. So yes. The crit is a 1. Let's roll on that table oh, for uh, Wild Shape. Uh, okay, so then it's going to be... That's a 4. Oh, I just... I wild Shape is intended. Okay. Yeah. So um, it feels a little weird. Um, you feel like it's not quite what you intended, and then all of a sudden it snaps back. And what were you intending to Wild Shape into? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I didn't have that in my head. <laughs> um... We'll just say a um, uh, a dire wolf. Okay, so as you start to wild shape, you swear for a second you felt like a wing, which didn't make sense to you, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden it was you were in a dire wolf, and you're like, yeah. okay, no, this is what I intended. And maybe, I don't know if this makes sense, Brockus and you've watched me, or Agar, wild shape into the spider before... Maybe you see like the, my the Agar's body change, and there's kind of be like a stutter to it. Make a could I do an investigation per- perception stuff? and Arcana. Okay. Uh, perceptions fourteen. Okay. Arcana is twenty one. So you notice a um, a little hesitation in the change, but then it's like it quickly goes back to what he intended so there's a slight hesitation in his body like as the ribs are kind of cracking and changing form it hesitates and kind of you see this blur for a second and then he finishes the change into a a dire wolf you notice that it wasn't as quick as it was with the spider but you also kind of stop to think maybe it's because of the size of a spider versus size of a dire wolf but you're pretty sure there was a hesitation there Okay. Like something almost didn't line up right, and then it kind of followed through to the end. Okay. And Brocko will just write that down, mm-hmm. take note of it. So you transform into a direwolf. Do you want to go back after that? Uh, it, it'll stand there for just for a minute. Maybe just kind of, you know, you see, the, you know, like, unlike a dog, like he's just kind of taking stock and mm-hmm. looking down at the paws. And Brocko's gonna walk him and like poke you with his pen. To make sure, like, you're a dire wolf and not, like, something else or something weird. You poke Agar with a pen? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's with a quill. Oh, yeah. Quill. So you just tickle him with a feather. Or oh, okay. I get, or I get, Brocka, like, pokes you with his finger. And Brocka kind of walks up and just kind of pokes Agar for a second in the spot that he saw, kind of. So the very yeah. large dire wolf head looks right at you, like, face to face. It just gives you a big lick on the face. Okay, um, Braca will be confused, but he knows it's Agar, yeah. and then and then Agar drops it, and he's just laughing. He goes, "That that seemed to to work. It didn't feel like it did before, but it." There was a moment where you timed it. It wasn't as quick as it was the previous time. If if Braca, if you could help me, if you could help keep an eye on me, just concerned. That things aren't working as they should. Uh, I'll see what I can do. I might be able to make something that could help. I don't know if it would or not. Okay. And that's it. Thank you, friends, for your help. I appreciate it. Sorry for the startle earlier. No, I mean, it's... I mean, I don't think you did it on purpose. Even if you did, it was still funny to see Ebron shriek. (laughs) Katie, are you okay? Yeah. We've had quite a few <laughs> days. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm ready for bed. Brock is going to look at Katie and just point to the tree. You are as big as that. I know. <laughs> and you you were even smaller. I was so yeah. worried I was going to squish you. Yeah. So you guys head back to camp. Everybody has already kind of bedded down. You guys spent, once you figured out, you guys have spent close to like an hour in the woods trying to figure that stuff out and... and changing and doing all that stuff didn't really feel like it but you guys were gone for a little while everybody is kind of asleep as you approach the caravan um, the figure that you had talked to last night quickly kind of approaches from the side and you guys didn't really see him coming but then he kind of walks up and he just says um oh, oh. go ahead perception go ahead I decline. 
<laughs> said I did not. <laughs> what? <You dick. laughs> I rolled the twenty. Yeah, I, and Agar did not. Uh, <laughs> so, so he kind of. You guys are all discussing what just happened quietly amongst yourselves, like headed back, and he just kind of pops up and he's like, "Hey, you guys want to?" Head back to the the caravan. Sorry, I just saw movement and I came over quick. I didn't mean to startle you. We are walking back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. I just I I saw movement. I just kind of thought it was somebody approaching. I didn't realize it was you guys until I got your spear is actually quite helpful. But um, I didn't realize until I got about fifteen twenty feet away from you who it was uh, that the light throws off my eyes. So I couldn't make out who you were. But now that I'm here, I can I can see. Um, Please, well, I am free. happy that you can see now. Goodbye. <laughs> Roger's going to walk off. <laughs> Interesting fellow. Um, <laughs> have a great night. And he kind of keeps walking around and keeps patrolling the caravan. Agar goes just, again, just off the road. So you guys are able to get a long rest um, and sleep through the to the morning. Sun comes up. You guys... Um, are waking up as the caravan is getting ready to move out. Dougal comes back, thanks you for everything that you've done for them the last couple of days, and says, you know, it's only a, only a few more hours, and then uh, we'll part ways. But uh, I wanted to give you guys a thank you for taking these folks. Is it a wood carving? No, I, I got you oh. 20 gold, so I figured five golds a piece. Is yeah. that all right? That's fine. And he kind of hands you a just a small coin purse with twenty gold. It's like thank thank you for taking these people and headed to Glamora. Who who takes the gold pouch? And Brock will if no one else does. Yep. And he'll divide it between everyone. Everybody has five gold. Yep. You guys travel on. There's uh not much during the day here. If you guys don't want to do anything else, we'll we'll go to midday. I look for Oh, actually. Tea leaves for the calming tea. Um, you said it's a new day, right? Yes. Um, Braca will, when he gets up, he's going to um, drop the infusion on the alchemy jug and mm-hmm. um, make an infusion of goggles of night for Katie. What is this? Okay. <laughs> I got an 11. I mean, I, can I assist her? Well, you know? well hang on. So right, yes. he's making the goggles of oh, night. Sorry. Um, you can help. You guys can look for tea leaves along the way. I would tell Agard, um, I, I wanted to try and find, um, there's a calming tea that I know how to make, uh, that may help. I don't know if maybe something internally, um, can help with that. Um, but if you, if you want to come with me to try to find the Mm -hmm. necessary plants. Of course. Yep, so you have advantage on that check. 14. Okay, you're able to find the stuff to make the tea. You're able to to find them, and you are certain that these are the different herbs and different plants that you need to do it. Did I find enough to... How many things of tea can I make with this? Roll a d6. D6. Roll two of them. Four. And four. Eight. Okay, so you found eight. Uh, enough to make eight teas and that's along the way so it's not kind of all at once you're able to pick as you guys go you find a couple different herbs here a couple there um, and when it reaches midday um, Dougal does come back and, and he kind of nods to you guys and says you know again thank you for helping kind of directs you like that's where you guys are going to head north and you guys kind of part ways you split and you start headed off you notice that the people that are walking with you are a little slower um and the the family lets you know that they actually they live in um a farm just after the fork so they will be parting away from you guys about an hour um after the fork they kind of live in the middle of the two cities Mm -hmm. so they'll disappear and then the other two will kind of be walking with you so Abron's going to be a little bit further ahead, mm-hmm. just kind of scouting a bit because he he's looking for uh, for uh, for threats, but also he's also 
looking for larger game because now that we're 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 along the road of the violet wood he's hoping that there's more substantial uh, animals that mm-hmm. he can hunt and help feed the uh, the group as well so can i make a, per- a a perception check for that um you can make a perception check Thirteen. You notice signs of wildlife. You don't necessarily see anything immediately in your vicinity, but you do notice that there are tracks and things picking up with larger animals in this area. Um, as you guys travel on, the family parts their their direction. They head towards their home, um, and you can actually see the small farmhouse off the road. So you can see that they're basically home. They're just walking up the drive. As you guys, yeah, they're just walking over the path, I guess. As you guys, as you guys continue on, Abron, you're looking at the front. What are the other three of you doing? Are you guys kind of helping Abron look? What What are you guys? I think you two are still kind of wandering, finding herbs right. and that throughout Agard the day. Is not looking for threats. I can tell you that. Okay. Um, Braca is, I guess, probably throughout the day. He's going to be working on the goggles of night. Okay. Um, and when nightfall kind of approaches, um, he'll give the goggles to Katie whenever that happens. Okay. You guys get a little ways up the road as you come to another small little crossroads, much smaller than the one that you guys were at at the fork. You guys get ready to bed down for the night. As you're bedding down, you realize that Glenn is the only person with you now. Well, how many people did you just lose? So the family went to their home. Right. And Brilla and Glenn were the only two that were still with you. So Brilla is now not with you. Rocco will probably like quickly snap up and realize that. Where's, and ask like Agard, where's the other one? I, Glenn, I, I don't see her. Uh, Ibron? I, I didn't see her. Katie, we're, I heard we're, apart. we're missing Brilla. Ah. Uh... Um, Glenn, do you, do you know the last time you saw Brilla with us? Yeah, how, how does Glenn look right now? Like normal Stone Cold? He, he just looks confused. Like he was just going about his business. He was just walking along. Um, you guys would have noticed that as you guys were walking, Glenn kept kind of walking ahead and then kind of dropping back into the group and then walking ahead. And like he was not necessarily like running. But he was kind of like trying to walking. trying to fast pace and get a little separation. But then he would run out. Of yeah, breath. that's what I'm doing too. Hmm? Absolutely. Nineteen natural twenty. Nice. Oh Glenn is just trying to get to where he wants to go. Um, you don't feel like he has any malicious intent, but he also doesn't care for anybody in the caravan. He just wants to get to Guamora. So he is just trying to get there as fast as he can. So I don't get the sense that like he knows anything about her disappearance. He's just trying to get mm-hmm. to where he's going. How did we lose a person? Glenn, Glenn kind of looks at you. He's like, I, I don't know. When when we left the path, you know, we, we stopped. We took a quick break to go to the bathroom. And then we, we got on our way. And I, I don't know. I didn't even rec- realize that she was gone until like an hour into it. But even then, like, clearly it was her choice to, to go off on her own. It's not... Well, she didn't. You just, didn't. I feel like she didn't did just you not disappear. bother to ask her if she was continuing on with us? That's kind of important. Did Did you bother to ask her if she was continuing on with us? Why I would was, I do that? I'm not I, the person who's escorting. I just need to get to Guamora. So when's the last time that we saw Brilla? When the family parted ways to go to their farm. I mean, how, I don't know, I don't know how long ago that was? Uh, at this point, it was probably. Five, six hours ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> we just, for five to six hours, wouldn't have noticed anything? Well, you guys were foraging. Brock was in his notebook. And Brown was up front, looking up. Uh, it's unfortunate, but maybe we should just continue on. You well, guys... it's nightfall, right? It's yes, <clears throat> it is nightfall. Oh. Camping. oh, that's right. Okay. Well, should we maybe put 
put the spear up as like a light so that maybe if she lost her way and is continuing on the trail, then she can see where we are. I am going to backtrack and see if you guys want to make camp here. I'm going to. Well, I don't want you to go alone. I'll go with him. Okay. I will walk the path with the spear. Okay. Since you are able to see better at night than I can, Ibrom, do you want to take the trees? Yes. I'd say we should backtrack at least an hour and a half, maybe even two at most, just so that way we can still make it back and and get some kind of rest. I was going to say, I will say, if you backtrack two hours, that's four hours total of you backtracking and coming back, you guys would need to camp until like eight in the morning if you're going to do that. I mean, that's fine. Actually... Hold on a second. You guys do something. <laughs> um, at this point, um, Braca will turn to Katie. Oh, I forgot. And he's going to hold up the goggles of night and he's just going to hand them to you. I made these for you. Oh, what are these? Uh, they should help you see better at night. <gasps> since I don't think you can. Not really. No, um, well, okay. Thank you. But yeah, no, I can't. Um, and I'm, I'm going to put them on because it's nighttime, right? I'm going to mm-hmm. put them on. Yes, it's nighttime. Okay, they work. I can see. Oh my gosh! They actually work. Yeah, I. I mean, I think so. I. I can see better than what I could see before. That's good. Brock is gonna pull out his notebook and jot down because he didn't think they were gonna work not that well. They're better than what I could see before, so. That's so they work. It's one of your. It's one of your abilities. You yes, can, the you can make infusions. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I should add goggles of night to my inventory. Yep. I don't think that's a uh, attunement. You just it's just something they just oh, yeah, I don't think they require attunement. They look like that. yours a little bit. Okay, so before we leave, mm-hmm. um Agard is going to um <laughs> I put Googles in night. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to stick to the trees, you're fine. I will stick to the path. Mm-hmm. Um I'm going to um change into something faster. Where I won't need the spear to see at night. And Agard wild shapes into a giant wolf spider. Okay. Oh. And I'm assuming, giant one? Um, Katie, oh, I'm assuming Brock and Katie to stay behind. Go ahead, just roll yeah. a d20. Let, let's check it, since it's still this day. Okay, it's only, it's only the CR's only one quarter, so. Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, if it's yeah. one quarter, no, you're yeah, fine. Yeah. You don't so have to worry about the, that. The movement is 40 feet, so it's faster. Because what do we say? Half at first, then one? Mm -hmm. Right. As we go up? Okay. Yep. So, yeah. Um, So, you're able to wild shape. Agard. Braca and... Maybe I should take the path and you take the trees. The giant wolf spider on the path might scare anyone. And then the spider's head just... So, you guys split off and head that way. And while you guys are headed down the path... Katie's not near you. (laughs) It is... You saw the spider before. This is a... Medium size. <laughs> no. Uh, Katie and Braca will stay behind and you camp the... with Glenn. Oh, God. Off into the, oh. Off, off into the woods. It, it's a do wolf spider, so it can do like the jump thing. Oh, oh God. So, yeah, so Braca, ass Braca the thinks that's so kind of cool, by the way. He hasn't said it. He just thinks that he, he thinks the wild shape thing is like the coolest thing. Agar ever. would hope that Braca thought that was really so, cool. So, Braca and Katie are staying back at the camp with Glenn. To watch Glenn. Yep. Keep I want to make <laughs> that clear. Freaking Glenn. <laughs> Freaking Glenn. We are always eyes on Glenn. <laughs> My favorite is the fact that you guys didn't pick up on the fact that I had not named him yet, but Brilla already had a name. Yeah. And something happens with Brilla, and you guys are like, what? And then you're like, we're going to watch Glenn. And I'm like, yeah, because I put so much thought into Glenn and <laughs> well, his no, name. I mean, no, Agar, is not, Agar did a, an insight on Glenn. A, yeah. Glenn's fine for Agar. He's just an asshole. Yeah, yeah um, Glenn is an asshole. Yeah, yeah. I don't like Glenn. Um, so, but yeah, I don't so, trust somebody with, an, with no last name. As a character, you haven't asked him if he has a last name. Um, so Katie and Katie and Braca <laughs> are uh, staying back, watching, keeping an eye on Glenn. My new goggles are on. Spider, giant or not giant wolf spider <laughs> Agard is bouncing around in the trees. Ebro and the Leonin is walking down the road. That's awesome. Everyone's why you see this <laughs> giant wolf spider on top of the trees. 
<laughs> what the? F- what, what was the? that? Nothing. Jesus. So, so yeah. So the yeah. the giant wolf spider is jumping from tree to tree. But I mean, I, you want me to do like perception something like that? I mean, I'm. Um, as you guys are going, um, since you guys, so I'll let you guys do it this way. You can both roll perception, or one of you can roll with advantage, since you're both looking. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you want to roll? Oh, all advantage. Yeah. Eighteen. You can roll it again. You got advantage. Ha ha, 21. Okay. Nice. Um, with the 21, you as you guys are going, you, you spend about an hour at this point walking down the path. You see tracks. You notice tracks of the wildlife that you had been keeping an eye on. You do notice um, as a giant wolf or as a wolf spider is jumping from tree to tree, you notice things running in front of you to the other side. Because where you guys are at, there is a... The, the violet woods, basically the path goes through the woods. So you guys are at a point where they're running across the road to the other side because they're seeing this wolf spider move. They don't realize it's not a threat. So they're like, ooh, get out of here. So you can see a couple deer and some other wildlife run across the road going into the opposite direction of the woods as you guys go. You see your own tracks. And as you're counting, you really only see enough for five people as you're headed back. Now, are the tracks still on the road, or or does one set lead off, or make, just simply vanish? make an investigation check with advantage for that? Reroll it if it goes off the table. Natural twenty. Okay. Nice. Yeah, you can't. You can't roll again. So, um, well, you could, but you're not going to beat that. Yeah, twenty. Um, as you as you're going along and you're looking at the tracks and you're focused on the tracks, you don't see any other ones. Other than your tracks, are you guys stopping after an hour or moving for the full two hours? Uh, Agard can't talk. I think in order to get back to the group, we should probably only go on maybe another 15 to 20 minutes. Just that way we ha- we have time to turn around and get back. Okay. So 15 to 20 minutes. Go ahead and make that check again. Okay. Um, perception to find the tracks and then investigation to see into the tracks. A one on you, perception. You have advantage, though. Okay. Natural twenty again. Whoa. Okay. So you Whoa. find so you find the tracks. Twenty. Um, 20. You're, you're looking at the tracks. You still only see five of you on the road. You see some other animal tracks, and you see you can't tell what exactly it is, but it's jumbled in. Go ahead and roll an investigation check to see if you can figure out what it is. Another twenty. Okay. Holy <laughs> crap! You know okay. what? Spread right. the magic, dude. Um, you you do <laughs> feel like happens. you can't tell how long it's been there because of the amount of traffic that has gone over it. Mm-hmm. But um, it it looks fresh, but it doesn't make sense because there's a lot of other tracks. You do realize that you guys have been fleshing out a lot of the wildlife because, like I said, a wolf spider jumping from tree to tree those. Anything along the fringe is running to the other side. How old do the human tracks look compared to the uh, the wildlife tracks around? They it? look like they've been made within the last day. Okay. In which direction are are they are they still going the way that we went, or do they kind of veer off? So looking at it, what you found mm-hmm. is looks like just the edge of what you can see, and they go into the woods. So, I'm going to turn and whistle to Agard and make a come here motion because you can see me, right? We have dark vision, so I'd, I'd say I would have kept probably a good distance. I would. I mean, he, I, I, Agard would hear the whistle. I would say, unless you want to roll for it. So, so I would make a hand motion that that shows. That he found that I found the uh, uh, the tracks, and then I would make a another like a a walking motion into the woods on the opposite side. So, Agar in in the spider form would come to you, and then just walking on the ground, start following the tracks, the tracks in the woods. Okay. So not jumping around and making all sorts of. 
Agar didn't really think about that, but mm-hmm. um, now he's going to just walk through the woods following what track we can find. Um, as you guys enter the woods, go ahead. Who is looking at the tracks? I mean, you're the tracker, I'm, right? Yeah, I'm. Go for it. I'm looking at him. So I mean, make I'm a helping, but uh, investigation under the tracks. Another twenty. Are you kidding me? I'm, Are you I'm serious? Not, I'm not kidding. That is crazy. I will roll again just roll? for posterity. No, I mean, obviously. I'm you, not. You found the tracks. They're headed into the forest. Wow. You found the way to hold your dice and <laughs> roll it right. Like, no damn. <laughs> yep, you found your way into the the tracks. They go into the woods and you can see them and they continue into the woods. So, I'm, so as I'm following them, I'm noticing that the woods are starting to get thicker. Nope. No? You're at the edge of the woods. I'm at the edge of the you woods. You basically follow them to the edge of the woods. You can see them going into the woods, but you're, are, you, are you following them deeper into the woods? Because yeah, this is going to be more time that you're taking off getting back to camp. No, I'm not going to follow them any further in, but it's puzzling to me that she would just veer off without saying something to any of us. No, well, I mean, you don't necessarily know that they True. belong to her, but... So I'm going to look at you and basically tell you we need to get back and let them know what we found. Because originally you saw they headed towards the woods. You walking up there, you can see them and Mm -hmm. you can see a path clearly going into the woods in a direction. But you're standing basically like five feet inside the woods looking in. Agard is going to take one of his little spider legs and point deeper towards where they go. All right, you head back. I'm going to follow the tracks into the woods for another 10 minutes, and then I'm coming back. Agar, chicken, spider head, no. That's a, <laughs> as good a communication you're going to get from the spider right now. <laughs> right. Um, go ahead, if you're going to continue to track them, go ahead and make an... Um, I'd say you can follow them for another couple minutes. Another investigation. Um, make an investigation check, yep. 21. Okay. So. Um, I would say with advantage, but 21 is fine. You you follow them as they hook in. They straighten out along the tree line. Mm-hmm. And then they cut back towards the main road. Towards mm-hmm. where our people are now? Yep. Um, real quick, can, uh, um, can Baraka, while they're gone, he wants to ritually cast Alarm just around... Yeah. The uh, the campsite because he, I that's, mean, that's probably not a bad um, idea. He, he's, he's just gonna make like a quick like elixir and just like sprinkle it around the yep. uh, in like a twenty foot cube around the campsite. It's just it's gonna be an audible alarm if anything triggers it. Absolutely, you're able to set that alarm up, and uh, like you said, you make an elixir, and what you do is you go to the point and you just kind of put a little bit, almost like on a stake. Yeah. In one corner, and then you walk over, and you make another one, and you make a a square or a rectangle around. Yeah, pr- where pretty you're at. pretty much like four of them, like mm-hmm. just tied together with yep. like string or whatever. And if any of them like hit, it like blows up one of them or whatever. Just yep. anything entering the site, it, you'll you'll hear it. It yeah. won't it won't necessarily blow up, but it'll make a noise to, right, yeah. to where yeah you yeah. understand it. It says it's a ringing, like a bell ringing for like mm-hmm. ten seconds. I'd imagine it'd probably be like a hissing, like something like getting lit on fire yeah we can do yours as more of a hissing um isn't it it's not audible to everybody though right no, isn't it's, it's it just audible. you oh it is yeah. audible i, I can make it mental or audible but i don't think mental would really make sense okay. for Brock. so you make it audible for yeah. everybody else what were, what were you gonna say real quick for katie oh she's just gonna be sitting there looking at him like his little um Braca always describes himself looking sideways at somebody whenever he's confused. And so she's kind of adopted that mannerism. <laughs> like, I'm confused. What are you doing? <laughs> after after I do it, I'll explain that if anything hits the wire, it's if it should, in theory, hit the wire. If anything comes over here, it's thin enough to the point where you can't really see it. So if anything hits it, it'll just cause a reaction in the elixir to make it go off for about 10 seconds i think so we'll hear if anything tries to enter the campsite and i'm gonna clock glenn what is he doing <laughs> oh, oh. i'm gonna I i'm look. gonna i'm gonna tell glenn if you can stay within the the square 
I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's not even needed. Glenn is snoring. Okay. He's where asleep. he set his stuff okay. down. Be he fell asleep real him. quick. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's um, sleeping. Mm-hmm. The, so, the Insight elix- check. The no. <laughs> effect of the elixir should fade it's in around nightmare. eight hours, if I'm correct. Okay. Okay. I will uh, not touch them. Okay. Probably a good idea. Although I really want to. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Didn't, didn't mean to interrupt. Nope. You're good. So you guys um, noticed that the footprints went into the woods, extended for a couple minutes, and then cut back towards the main road. What do you guys want to do? Well, since they're going back towards the uh, the direction that we came from, I think I would say we keep following them. Okay. So I'm going to make another investigation check. 19. You are able to follow them back to the main road? Eh, not a natural 20. Oh, no. <clears throat> yeah. And they kind of get jumbled in with some of the footsteps that are already there. So you're going to need to make a perception check to find them again. Yeah, it's not happening. But it has advantage, though, right? Oh, yeah, I do. Perception yeah. Re- 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 yeah, doesn't work. So um, you you follow it back. You start to believe that whatever you're following is probably Glenn, because Glenn's with you. You're not certain. And this is starting to really frustrate him mm-hmm. because up until now, he, he's been able to track and follow it with pinpoint precision. But the jumbling of the wildlife tracks and all that has made it even harder. Yep. It just threw you off. Mm-hmm. They all kind of melded together there. But it was definitely weird that those those feet went off into the woods and then back to the path. Let's head back and tell the others what we found, and get and get a little bit of rest. We're we're gonna be hit. Yeah. is gonna be asleep by then because it's what f- four hours total or whatever, like or an hour and a half hour or two hours out. About three hours. Yeah, they were wandering around. Yeah, Brock is gonna be passed out by then. I mean, he's gonna get startled because his alarm's gonna go off. But yep. you, know. you guys get back around like eleven ish. Yeah. As you guys kind of started to bed down around eight. And as you do get back, you have your staff and you have dark vision. So I would say. Oh, I'm, I'm still in. You're going to stay in spider form? Yeah. Just because it, it has dark vision right now. It's not going to. Both of you okay. make a perception check. 19. Eighteen. Okay. As you guys are walking back, you both, before you enter into camp, notice the four vials and strings tied to all of them. They probably would have been, like, stuck, like, kind of in the ground as well, like, barely poking up. Yeah, so so they kind of see it, and they kind of stop for a second and look. But as you look up, you see Braca asleep. Is Katie awake or asleep as well? She would be asleep. So you see Braca and Katie asleep, and um, around when would you guys have gone to sleep? Uh, probably like an hour later. Like, Raka probably would have gone to sleep like 10 minutes after the alarm. Katie is sitting up asleep because she would be, she would have still been trying to watch Glenn. She's very suspicious. So you make your check real quick. Oh, right. While they're gone, this would probably take place. So. 71. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was the top 20 or 25, right? So you're good. Um, Katie, make a perception check with disadvantage. Well, can't... Oh, wait, that's... Oh, my God, my first natural 20, and I have to do disadvantage. So it is a four. (laughs) Jesus. Uh, The magic, but on the wrong roll. Right? So the alarms... Well, let's see. Um, it's a four. You you can you can cut this out if you want to, but alarm says it doesn't say that you can see it or anything. It's just a warded area, so uh, there's no way to okay. see it. So it's not necessarily. So even though there's strings tied to it, it's yeah, more like, like that, a, that, a forest wall going. That's up. why I was like, it's like thin enough to the point where you can't see it. Like the, okay, like the string. So it's more of together. a forest wall. Like yeah. this, the string is just for aesthetics. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and now with alarm, you can make it to where certain people can pass through it correct uh designate creatures that won't set off the alarm so i would have done everyone in the party 
Okay. And besides Glenn, because if okay. Glenn leaves, it's besides Glenn. Yeah. Okay. So you guys get back. You see that those two are asleep, and you do see Glenn sleeping, snoring really loud. You guys walk in. Nothing happens. I'm gonna stay up for, uh, for a bit. Uh, Agard will. Just, I mean, everything's normal. I would think. Mm-hmm. Although there's such an emphasis on Glenn snoring. Um, you just notice that there's no wildlife anywhere around you. Mm-hmm. And it's would it be ear, eerily quiet too? No, it, Glenn is snoring. There is no such thing <laughs> as quiet with Glenn around. Okay, well, I feel like a human snoring would keep wildlife quiet. I mean, it's... Yeah, they stay away. Yeah. Okay. I feel like you're being obtuse. <laughs> I feel like you guys are chasing a red herring that is just okay. a red herring, but you know... <laughs> no, 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 that's right. He's Agar, 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 Agar just, he, he goes again a little bit outside of... Mm-hmm. Group and does it another just go, okay. go to sleep? Yep. How long are you staying up? Because that will determine whether you have a point of exhaustion tomorrow or not. Just like another hour. Okay. So you stay up for another hour and then do you go to sleep? Mm-hmm. Okay. You guys sleep through the night. You wake up. What time did you set that alarm? I mean, it lasts for eight hours. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. What time did you set it? Um, Was it when they left or? Like an hour after they left. Okay. And how long does it take you to set it? I ritually cast it, so. I think it's like 10 minutes for a ritual yeah. cast, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, it, ca- it casting time is originally one minute, so 11 minutes, I guess. Okay. So around nine. So that would last for eight hours. Five until, yeah, five. So you guys, you didn't wake anybody up. You went straight to sleep. So you guys all wake up as the sun is coming up. Glenn is not with you any longer. What? He slept for like two seconds. However, you do see footprints headed north. Okay, well, Agard would address Katie and uh, Bracca. Uh, We didn't find anything last night. We found some tracks you weren't sure about that circled in the woods and came back out and we're not sure what they were but we couldn't find any sign of of Brilla whatsoever so I'm not sure when she left the group Glenn is gone obviously looks like he's heading north so I just say we go I mean if they wanted to leave the party that was up to them right that was the can't exactly control what they do so it doesn't really matter right that's yeah. what the caravan said, too. They weren't responsible for people mm-hmm. if they decided to veer off. So we should just continue on. Agreed. Agreed. Also, Glenn told you he just wanted to get there quick. Yeah. So yeah. he I mean, pretty much just woke up and took off. I just didn't not know worried if he about, set off the alarm or not. Agard isn't worried about Glenn at all. After that insight yeah. check, <laughs> Glenn is just, he was snoring last night. Agard doesn't care. Yeah. It was Brilla that is just this question mark. Mm-hmm. Unknown. So... Um, you guys get up. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, Brock is just going to, um, when he wakes up, just pick up the um, uh, the vials that he th- like planted in the ground along with the sil- silver wire and just pour out the elixir that was in it since it's just, ma- just pretty much water Okay. at this point. It's not magical or anything anymore. I would also make um, calming tea for Agard. Okay. So you guys make the calming tea in the morning. Um, you guys can sit and have that. It, it won't take you long. You guys kind of get up, start getting things ready. Um, I would say, Abron, as a tracker, mm-hmm. you looking at the tracks, you, you can figure out that Glenn is headed north toward Glamora. Um, and he's probably in a bit of a hurry still. He's he's trying to be, but he's a commoner, so he you know can only move so fast um and he gets tired quick <laughs> but he he is moving um north you guys have woken up you had your tea 
Um, I will say the T. Roll a, a D twenty. Sixteen. Okay, you feel a little better today with that T when it comes to like feeling the the flow of energy through you and things like that. You feel you feel a little bit better. You feel a little more calmed by the tea. So feeling better, uh, Agar is going to cast Goodberry. Roll a d twenty to see if it triggers, <laughs> but with advantage. I mean, I was going to say with advantage because of the tea. So you can roll that one again. Four. Oh Four. my gosh, a guard! Mm-hmm. If Rocka sees you casting, he's, he's gonna—I mean—still do the same thing. Like, just pay full uh. attention, just observe any difference. Go ahead and roll a d6. All on the table. I am trying here. <laughs> Son one. of a. What? What is that on the table? That's a roll d20. Okay. I'm getting about twenty feet away, so that way I don't. Oh, get, oh, oh, you don't no. have get, time. You don't have time. Yeah. yeah, you don't have time. Wild magic is it's the like moment he tries instant. to cast it. Yeah. I mean, Brock is probably like five feet from him. That's fine. I was close. I was giving him tea. What is it? It's a two. Mm-hmm. Even numbers aren't good. Oh, lovely! <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. <clears throat> Thorn-covered vines move out from beneath your feet. <clears throat> Do a deck saving throw to see if you are not prone. All creatures, including yourself and allies, within 30 feet of you must succeed a deck saving throw or take 2d6 piercing damage. Oh my god. And are restrained until the end of their next turn. <laughs> restrained? What the... Oh my god. So... so everybody has to do a deck save. Yep. That's, that's a no what, for What me, is the dog. DC? 12? Uh, we didn't set a DC. Let, uh, do you well, want my... Since since you guys are level three, let's say it, it's it's. What is yours? What's my my dex? Yeah. Uh, well, let me get this way. Because I was gonna say twelve, but if your DC save is eleven or ten, we'll go by that. Oh, Whatever's the lowest. Hold on, I'm not in that thing. Um, dex save for me. Is um, my dex is a seventeen? I got a plus three. My saving throw is a plus four. So that's what a twelve, right? Or is it ten plus four? It's ten plus four. Okay, so we're gonna go with the twelve that I had okay. set it out. Oh my god! Since it's one of the first times okay. it's being cast. So dexterity. Oop, oop. Nope. It's a no for me. I got twenty-one. Ten. I got a seven. Do you want me to roll the d6, or do you want to? Uh, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Because you're rolling low, let's hopefully... <laughs> <laughs> Double six. Uh, that's six total. Okay. A two and a four. So, you three, and I believe he still takes half damage, correct? Uh, or... At the beginning of the turn... Oh, wait. I'm reading the wrong one. Piercing and restraining. No damage on a success. No, no damage, no damage on, on a successful success. save. Okay. And target is not restrained. Okay, so you guys all are kind of watching, and all of a sudden these vines shoot out, and Ebron just has that split second where he jumps just outside of it as it comes up, mm-hmm. and the three of you are pulled real tight by these vines, and you take your ah as they dig in, and then all of a sudden they just disappear, and you kind of fall over, and you're like oh, and you're kind of feeling around, and you can feel all the little. Little cuts and scrapes that the um, the thorns on the vines. Yeah, it's fine. it's oh. not your fault. <laughs> Agar, this this isn't what I meant by calming tea. Uh, the the tea did not work. Um, Brocco will jot that no. down in his nope. <laughs> well, well, and we're technically not in the woods right now, right? No. Nope. Well, are we? Are we in the, uh, the you're you're, the you're just off the path, so okay. you're in between the woods and the path. Well. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. No, I. We can try again another day. I, I think sometimes it takes a couple tries. So we, we'll just. So we're we're still in the woods, like in the um, violet woods, correct? Yeah. And you, on a, off just off the path in the, in the woods. What do you roll for your good berry? Do you roll a d10? Yeah, roll that as well. Oh, no. We have some bad berry. 
Oh no. Uh, Chronic six. diarrhea. So <laughs> as you're kind of looking around, <laughs> yeah. you do notice that as the vines dissipate, there are six berries in the area. Oh. oh. I, I rolled a d20 to see if okay. they would appear anyways. Okay. And they, they now, do Now, did they, are, do I recognize these are, mm-hmm. okay. Oh, well, it's not entirely bad. And I pick up six. Oh, all right. Well, that, I mean, that's a start. Does anyone want? Sure. <laughs> I was no. going to say, the, uh, the tea gave you advantage, and I felt like that would kind of help as you okay. felt like the magic was kind of leveling out okay. um, to give you a little bit. So you did get six good berries out of it. Um, okay. You guys can all take one and get one yeah. hit point back if you take it, and you also don't need to eat for the rest of the day. Brock is just going to like sternly write down stuff in his notebook. Brock, could take your after good all berry. of that. What? <laughs> take your good berry. Oh, we only okay. yeah, we only get it like normal. <laughs> all right, I, 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 we should we should get underway. Okay. So yep, you guys start headed up the path. Um, you spend about say an hour or so walking. And Agard is uh, walking ahead of the group. He's very frustrated at this point. As you're walking, you start to hear. What well, sounds like commotion or arguing ahead. Since I'm walking ahead, would I hear it first? Mm-hmm. Okay. I motion everyone to stop. But I, I'm hearing what sounds like arguing ahead. We should proceed with caution. And you can hear three voices. One's like, you moron. And one's like, you nitwit. And they're just kind of going back and forth, kind of insulting each other at the side of the road. Um, and as you guys are walking, when you get within about 30 feet of it, okay, you can make out three figures just standing just outside the, uh, violet woods on the path. We're going to go ahead and end this week's episode here as the heroes of Saborsa approach three individuals arguing just outside the violet woods. As always, thank you to everyone who took the time out of their busy week to listen to our episode. The next two weeks, we have a special treat for our listeners in honor of Halloween. Please tune in next week as our cast goes back in time to play all new characters on an important mission for the Order of the Bloodhawks. Thanks again for tuning in to Cocked, a real play D&D podcast. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to our cast and crew. The details can be found in the episode descriptions.